about his philosophy that's absolute veritas absolute renaissance but this just broke at infowars.com right now and prisonplanet.com our mirror backup site jp morgan executive becomes fifth banker to die in last two weeks now by the way that's top bankers i, I was doing some math last week on this searching i, I, I found like 20 bankers in the eu england and the U.S. that are very mysteriously falling into the water, being found dead in parking lots, uh, shooting themselves in the heads, jumping off high rises. Some fear spat of deaths or spate of deaths linked to imminent financial crisis. This is very suspicious because these are all like super high level, but still comp trollers above the highest level. Looks to me like they're getting rid of where the bodies are buried. Uh, ahead of something, and of course, the, the criminal investigations of J.P. Morgan and the, the fines they and others have been paying that are chicken feed. Uh, Gerald, you've always got your ear to the ground. You're a big consultant to Washington Chemical Companies, you name it. I know you've been following this. How does this tie into everything? What does your nose tell you is going on here? Well, when you look at the real numbers, you've had just in January, you had an outflow of probably about $12 you know, billion dollars uh, uh, out of the, or uh, much more, out of the um, uh, emerging markets. I mean, tens of, probably a trillion. Yeah, that's what's happening in Turkey, all over the place. Yeah, as a matter of fact, in Kazakhstan yesterday, they just devalued the currency by 20%. And you don't have to be a trend forecaster or a mathematician or an economist to figure this Quantify out. Quantify that. There's a race to devalue worldwide. Yeah, what happens is that all of the tape, all of the stimulus pushed a lot of hot money into these emerging markets. It's called a carry trade. You borrow it real cheap, you bring it to a, another place where you're going to get a lot more for it. It's as simple as that. Now, with the tapering, that money's flowing out. But when the money flowed in, it built the economies of places like Turkey, like Brazil, like uh, South Africa. It kept pumping up all of India. So now, as the money flows out, what they're trying to do because their, their currencies are crashing is they're raising interest rates to protect their currency. Brilliant. Now, let me get this straight. Your economy's going down. You, it's getting worse. Your currency's being devalued. And to save that currency, now you're going to raise interest rates to make it even more expensive to borrow. Brilliant. That'll really help the economy go way down because that's what's happening. So now, as I mentioned, they're either devaluing or raising their interest rates. The net result is the same. Recessions turn into depressions. Now, going back to the biggest story, we just saw the dog and pony show yesterday on I got a, you can't call her Fed chairwoman. She doesn't like that. Fed chair yelling at at the the house meeting. That's good. Say it how you how she says to do it, or you're bad. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, well, we call it an Italian faccia brut, but we won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I could call you that. But anyway, the she went on. Let me set the scene. The markets are crashing a week and a half ago, all over the Dow, the, 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 all over the world, the, the Asian markets, the DAX in Europe, all of them are going way, way down every day, every day, every day. Everyone's waiting for Friday. Now, this is a fact. Everyone was waiting for Friday to see what the job numbers would be. So the job numbers come out. The consensus on Wall Street, we're going to have 189,000 new jobs. And they got this guy over there, this shill that they're always quoting in all the newspapers everywhere, this Mark Zandi. 
He was up to 179,000. He comes in, the numbers come in, they're 113,000. The estimate on the streets, 189,000. Zandi said when the September, December numbers came out at 74,000, and anybody could look it up, it's gone, it's, you could Google it up and on uh, CNBC back in December. Numbers come back. Oh, I, these numbers. No, no, they're wrong. They're wrong. They're going to be readjusted. I, I pay no attention. They ask them, how much is the December number going to be pushed up? Oh, 200 K. OK, 200,000. So now remember, going back to last Friday, now they readjust the December numbers. December numbers come out. They readjust them. It went from 74,000 to 75,000. Now, you look at the market, boom, when the numbers came out at 8.30, the, the, uh, the expectations were for the market, the pre-market opening to be down. The market opens up, and on the good news of lousy job numbers, the market pumps up and follows through a little bit on Monday, and then Yellen comes out, Yellen bloody murder, and she says that they're going to keep doing the tapering, but if things get bad, there'll be some quantitative easing. The markets shoot up more. On what? Not on the fundamentals, because here's the big lie, or I should say cover-up, that the Fed chair said. She makes a point of saying how great the, drop, the number dropped from the high unemployment rate of over 10% down now to approaching 6.5. What she failed to acknowledge in all of this BS that no one called her out on was, hey, Miss uh, Fed Chair, the reason the number went so low is because of all those people that what they do now in the USSA is once you're unemployed, once you're no longer getting benefits, once you can't find a job, you're not count as unemployed anymore. That's why the number went down. So now, today, the markets are down, what, about 30 points as we're speaking, 36 points. There's nothing to drive the markets up. There's only pressure to drive them down. Now let's look at gold. Since the beginning of the year, gold has been steadily increasing all of the time and now it's approaching the 1300 mark now i want to make this clear you made it real clear when you said the markets were rigged and um, what i'm leading up to is that we know the forex market is rigged that's the market which trades currencies i'm not making it up it's a fact at the point of by the way they're trading each day $5.3 trillion. Well, look at LIBOR. It just goes on and on. LIBOR now. Here's some of that guy, Jim Cramer, that's always on CNBC. This was reported on Yahoo yesterday. Here's the headline so everyone knows that I'm not making it up. Jim Cramer. Yes, the market is rigged. Yes, the market is rigged. There's no doubt about it. So when I say gold is going up and the market is rigged, it is not in the best interests of the central banks that are pumping out this cheap dough to see gold prices go up. At the same time, if you go to... Uh, People's Daily yesterday out of China, the report is that gold consumption in China from 2012 to 2013 increased 41%. So the rig market, the paper market that the Goldman Sachs gang, the Merrill Lynch mob, the Deutsche Bank bandits keep rigging, that's very different from the real gold. And it market. shows the false reality. We talked about this years ago. How they use naked shorts, all of it. They won't give Germany their gold. They trade gold in the market they don't have. India, China, they're all buying at record levels. You can't buy physical gold for what they claim spot is. The mints are running out. 
And meanwhile, I get emails and see comments going, thought gold was a good investment. Well, I'll tell people buy it at 270 and it went up to almost 2000 and, you know, at 1200, 1300, whatever. I haven't sold one gold coin I bought, one silver coin I bought because I know it's all a fraud. And, and, and regardless, it's my emergency backup. But the issue is it is rigged on every front. And when gold shot up, as you know, a few weeks ago, Gerald, suddenly the dollar started going down. But it's the seesaw, but it can't go on. It can't go on forever. Uh, and so it's just so frustrating to watch him do this. Again, this is Jim Cramer. This is a guy that's on CNBC, you know, weekdays, every night, and on their shows, saying that market is rigged. Well, it's like people saying to you, Gerald, nothing ever collapsed. You were wrong. When by every real metric, they're rigging all the jobless numbers, the unemployment numbers. We're in a depression in most sectors of the economy. It's worldwide. They got like 30, 40, 50 percent unemployment in, in, in areas of Europe. I mean, they're doing 100 percent taxes in, in France to pay the bills. The world is going over the edge. There's riots worldwide, food riots, inflation worldwide. And they're going, no, none of that's happening. There was no collapse. Well, we're just like collapsing down to different levels and different strata towards the bottom, but undoubtedly it's happening. And then people say, Alex, where's the martial law? Well, naked body scanners, checkpoints, NSA spying, uh, arresting people that demonstrate, Obama saying he's above the law, he's good at killing people, no bid contracts, funding Al Qaeda. I mean, we are in a fascist system by degree and people keep saying, well, nobody's kicked my door down. No, they just uh, made you go from 40 hours to 30 hours under Obamacare and you're going bankrupt. I mean, they just don't get it. That we're trying to hold back the takeover, and we've been somewhat successful, and we're here trying to hold the gate up, and they're going, there's no enemy behind that gate, as, as you know, arrows shoot over the parapet at us. Again, you know, it's, it's what we have right now to me is very reminiscent of prior to World War I. You have a lot of inept, incompetent sociopaths and psychopaths, whether they're in government or the military, that are leading the people to destruction over nothing. And, you know, going back to the, the jobs here, yeah. Home Depot plans 80,000 new hirees. Amazon, 2,500 new workers. OK, Home Depot, 80,000, right? Once upon a time in America, there were these things called hardware stores, and you could own one. You had one on your block, in your neighborhood, in your village, in your town. If you lived in a city, they were all over the place, owned by individuals. Now it's controlled by the multinational. 80,000 slave landia jobs. Oh, wow. But it's worse than that, as you know. They cut most people from 40 to 20 hours, not just 30. And then they went out and hired other people. So it's all part time like Walmart now because they said we want to keep our workers at the level to get welfare to supplement their job here. Walmart's on record. So that's not 80,000 new jobs. Exactly. And then you have Amazon. So all you young boys and girls out there that want to get a college degree, a B.A. or a B.S., you could get one in packing and shipping because those are the kind of jobs. Except they're putting get. robots in now to replace them. Now, this is from CNBC today. Just to show you how far out of touch everybody is. This is the headline. Luxury CEO. The poor should stop whining. Now, this is from Bud Kohnheim who is the head of Nicole Miller, which is a luxury fashion uh, 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 product. They sell luxury fashion sh shop. He said, we've got a country that the poverty level is wealth in 99% of the rest of the world. So we're talking about woe is me, woe is us, woe is this. The guy that's making, oh my God, he's making $35,000 a year. Why don't we try that out in India or some countries we can't even name? China, any place, the guy is wealthy. 
That's how out of touch they are. Yeah, their new argument is, but the cost of living here is a lot more. 10, 20, 30 times what it is in Africa uh, or India. This is, this is a guy. That's no, no, that's a new thing. The, no, no, I saw an article last week in AP. The new.